I think maybe it's a bit ego, but I think I, I showed already how good I am and uh, I just need to prove people that I can be consistent at it. Like, uh, I think everyone that watched my career know that I can easily carry a game from my position and I'm really aggressive jungler, but uh, the thing that I've been working this past year is to be more consistent at it and don't do crazy stuff sometimes because it's fine to be crazy and look for weird plays sometimes but if you do it all the time it's not good so i just want to find consistency and balance in my gameplay and i feel like this year uh considering all the circumstances that i went through i achieved that so far and i'm looking forward to keep getting better at it Razork striving to find consistency, certainly had a stellar performance in game one, all the way from his days at Misfits, where he had those incredible explosive performances, those high highs he talked about, now trying to transition those into a finals appearance. Fnatic currently one game up over the Mad Lions. And a lot of that game, while Fnatic certainly executed well, Yamato highlighting Humanoid on the desk, a lot of that game felt like a bit of a draft diffy. Yeah, it was a bit iffy <laughs> as we came into this. I mean, I want to say Mad Lions, <laughs> Mad Lions were coming in swinging, but it just wasn't really working out, right? He got the rail, but after that, it kind of just fell apart where the Ari just wasn't able to do too much. The poppy pick, as we highlighted, was a great answer from Wonder, but it didn't really matter as he started to drop down into like, hey, we're going to be able to get Nautilus into Thresh. It just felt like you're scraping the bottom of the barrel for a lot of this for Mad Lions. So I'm curious to see now, coming into this, how they are going to try and mix it up and maybe if their priority even changes. Yeah, I think they have two options. Option number one is change the mid pick. Rel Cassante, sure, let's fix a different mid laner up to make sure we can actually start contesting and have some form of like damage in the mid jungle with Rel and set up to move the sides. Option two is throw the Rel out of the window. Play for Ivern. Maybe Ivern is your defining pick of this series. Start playing towards that direction. Maybe some kind of bruiserish top that can facilitate the Ivern. An early blind pick Nautilus with a brown band, something like that. I know you, know, you need a melee support, take away the Ivern or change the mid pick. I think it's our two options. I think it is a bit awkward though, because again, we haven't really seen Niski go for things like the Tristan and yeah. the Jace and that kind of stuff. So um, I definitely think that's where we're gonna have to see if he's gonna try and bring it out. If you end up going for an Ivern, I know like things like the Maokai or the, at least the AP junglers, a lot of them were banned away, but I am curious to see exactly what the game plan is gonna be, because I think you need to mix it up somehow. I just don't know if it's gonna be a comfort style for Mad if they do. I, I wouldn't even mind it, but mind a Nautilus ban here uh, from Mad Lions on the one two three, Just to eliminate potential comfort for Trimby as well as just a safe blind pick, always going to be an option. And bot lane, a, a lane we talked about attacking given how good Karzy has been in recent uh, weeks. That said, Noah, stellar performance in game one. We'll see if he can replicate it here as we come to game two this time around. Mad Lions uh, remaining on the blue side. Yeah, Their same. choice of side selection. Similar bands coming in, the Rel's open, we might see a Renekton last band from Mad Lions to cover off the Sejuani Renekton, but then Ivern is still Fnatic's bread and butter. Do you first pick that away? Rel's still open. They're gonna take away the Rel here, Fnatic, so they're the, actually the first ones to change something up. It's, it's a bit odd. Usually in best of five pick band philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If someone wants to run it back on a game where you dominated, you know, why not just but run it back? If you ban Rel, don't you have to ban Ivern as well? Yeah, and that's where I'm kind of getting a bit confused. And then even you just give the opportunities for Mad Lions to take away the Talia. Are they, so well unless Jay's AP Jungler. They're playing AP Jungler into yeah, Ivern. Yeah, 100%. So Fnatic are setting up a trap here. No, they oh, ban both. They <laughs> but I don't get that. So now Sejuani <laughs> is like super high prio, but maybe they want to play into Sejuani. Maybe okay. they want to play some kind of Talia here on 1-2. But they're going to take away the Jace here, Mad Lions. So they've committed to Rel Ivern bans. So let's see what is they're planning. Is it Chasey Jace? or Nisky Jace, though. That, that's what I'm curious about, if it'll actually go top, or if they'll even lock it in. I mean, perfectly honest, we just go towards this as Juani, but actually it's going to be immediately taking them to that top side. I think Talia is still a decent response here if you want to try and go across for Fnatic. Um, and then you know, I am questioning, because we've already seen Razor go towards things like Karthus, these kind of picks in the jungle, so maybe it is Fla uh, Fnatic flexing their muscles again, kind of showing, hey, we played through Nolan the last one, we've already played through Razor, we can play multiple different styles, we're just going to throw a different match. And I think if you're Mad Lions, like many of us, your read coming into this week was that it was all about mid-jungle for Fnatic, but showing that Noah is also a force to be reckoned with this weekend is concerning when it comes to drafting. Now, immediate Talia lock-in is a flex until yeah. we see a jungler. I, I like this Talia 1-2. One, two. Uh, one, two, there's Maokai, Rel, Ivern, Benz. Mad Lions are probably going to pick Sejuani unless they pivot to like a Karthus of their own, which would surprise me with Jace. With, yeah, not and the most ideal. Yeah, they can pick AD here if they want Fnatic. They can pick Zaya. They can pick the Nautilus blind. They can keep this Talia flex mid jungle. They can pick top on three. Like, I don't know, Mad Lions, I would love to see some kind of AP jungler here. 
Karth is blind, you know, something crazy. Maybe just full team fight prowess if you really want to go Sejuani. Renek is down, I don't know, it becomes complicated. Are they really going to go Sejuani, Kasante? It just doesn't sound like it's going to win you the game. Yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one. Yeah. Oh. From is a decent response into the Nautilus, but again, I, you've already kind of got so much flexibility on Fnatic's side, and it comes a little bit awkward. It's just, I mean, Brown Sejuani yeah. is the easy option to yeah. hold this, right? Um, but we need to see where the spice comes in from Mad Lions' draft. If it isn't here and it is a Sejuani, they're going to need something on the 4-5 to really round this out properly. Twisted Fate for Niski, a throwback, but utility is what we talk about when we talk about Niski as yeah. a player. You can't blind Jace, can you? You can't blind Jace top. Wonder Rule just slam in a mouth fight or something, you know, he really doesn't care. And then all of a sudden it's about bot lane with the Jace and you just lose team fights. So again here, they can just pick whatever they want. They can pick AD, they can pick Zion Nautilus, they can play Kalista Nautilus. Um, they can pick Trundle if they want. They could <laughs> pick up, they have so many options, it's yeah. crazy. They can pick Azir, yeah, you can play, oh, Azir. Well, yeah, double AP, maybe not ideal, but yeah. as you highlighted, a ton of options. Double AP will be the choice, again, against the 20 who's going to build so much MR. If, if you fall behind early, this can be a bit concerning. Hard to shred through that tank line, but Fnatic's team fighting power with double AP control mages as a back line is going to be a force to be reckoned with if we go late enough. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Wunder's match history here. It's literally just Renekton and Poppy every single game. All right, so. throwback, 2016. Wonder, 1-3-1 one, one splice, because they could only play 1-3-1. One, one. He played Talia top lane. I don't ever think it will be coming out ever again because it was bad, but I'm just saying, it would be a throwback. <laughs> I'm cooking a little bit. <laughs> But it wasn't Talia support like a decent answer to Braum years ago, where you like toss right, her into the bot lane. Yeah, every time he tries to jump around, you are you telling me they're gonna go like Nautilus jungle? Nautilus jungle. Talia, yeah. I think that's but the maybe fire. I'm the a the kitchen's on much. fire then, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm dizzy as hell if that's good. Yeah. Uh, was he? Was my man's good. like light up the grill and dagged over here, brought the bonfire. Mate, you know what I mean? Look, I'm coming across from the LPL. I've got to go like seven different directions that, before that, I figure out. That's where a we're well going. done steak <laughs> that you were cooking right there, Dagdo. Or maybe the Fnatic's cooking. We'll find out if it, uh, the prediction comes true for now. Cassante, again, trying to take some of these blind picks away from Wonder. Tricky because they're on red side Fnatic, so they will have the luxury of counter pick no matter what you do. But Ezreal will now be taken off the board as well. Yeah. And now it's just a case of. Fnatic finding AD in their comp, and Mad Lions finding a bit more AP. You know, it sounds a bit silly, but Cog, things I like guess. Gwen and Kennen are good, so blinding Scion becomes very difficult, but Poppy feels like a really easy pick here for Fnatic, but then if you play up against, you know, uh, something like the Gwen, isn't that a bit tricky? You know, GP then could come out, like, this draft could go in a couple different directions. Yeah, I'm curious as well, like, if you just want to try and go for a poke for Mad Lions as Ooh, well. Rumble. Where you end up going oh, yeah. towards, yeah. Rumble's right. open. Um, we can go towards, as you say, Rumble. You can even go towards like the Kaiser along those lines as well. Not great into the Zaya. Zaya definitely has a winning matchup there, but you can just play for that AP poke coming through from the Jace. And you've got a decent front line as well. And right now, yes, you've got Nautilus, but not the best of engages on Fnatic side. So I'm curious if that is going to be the pivot that they have. And I'm curious to see now that Mad Lions have the luxury of perfect information. There's no way. Oh. What are they going to do? And they want a powerhouse bottom lane. Forest Braum is going to be tough for a Nautilus Zaya to deal with without jungle intervention. Uh, you know, just the Braum Unbreakable does so much to mitigate any of Zaya's potential damage threat. And you can still go for poke here as well with the Varus, right? And you still get to play a range. So I think for uh, Mad Lions, they're like, look, realistically, apart from Nautilus, we're going to be in a good spot. So I'm curious now what they want to take for Chasey. But yeah, there's the Rumble. So a lot I mean, of poke, poke coming through from Mad yeah. Lions. And Fnatic now, I honestly think Wonder what do you try and pick? It has to be like an Orn or something along those lines. Well, Orn is banned. It's they they, they've they've yes. got ahead. Oh, they they, like... they kind of need an AD set up top. Renekton's down. Scion, GP, like I said, wow. GP could come out. But I think Camille is maybe your best bet here. But I mean, Merc shreds values through the roof. I kind of like Camille here for Fnatic. Maybe it's your best option, but you don't have any frontline then. But picking Scion in this draft just really stings. Gonna go Scion in this draft. It's coming out, and it certainly does sting. Again, all your AD damage has to come from Noah now. Wonder's gonna try to weather the storm against a rumble on the top side of the map. And while front to back, Fnatic's composition looks terrifying. Uh, the range that Mad Lions have with the accelerated shock blast, with the bars poke, if he does opt to go to lethality, is going to be brutal. I mean, just look at it on isolation. Top lane, they should have top push. Bot side, Varus, Braum, Sidioni, and Nautilus, unplayable. 3v3's in their favor. Mid lane, well, if Jace has both side pushes and Talia's trying to farm and be self uh, kind of sufficient, Jace will get mid push. There's a very likely thing here where all neutral objectives are impossible for Fnatic to contest. They need three items on both carries. They need to find a front-to-back. They're down 5k gold. 
and they lose a Baron, like, it's really hard to face check. Like, this could go really wrong for Fnatic if uh, Mad Lion snowball well. And that's what I was going to say. Like, if you end up getting to a position where you're like, oh, we stalled for three items, we've given up all of our outer turrets, it's like, how the hell do you try and contest anything? You've got so much poke, range, everything. It's going to be going in favor of Mad. Yeah, Mad need to make sure they don't drop the ball, though. If they get caught with their pants down around Baron, they get ace and lose that objective, game's over. Like, that, you're not coming back from that. So they need to keep this lead. They have so many more tools this time around. Very early game centric, very mid game centric, but they have more damage, more setup, more CC, <laughs> more poke, more, and it's more threat in face checks. More a hope. Very similar situation to game one, just the kind of the stakes have shifted. I feel like Mad Lions have overall the much more stable composition, even if it is the comp that wants to get ahead. Fnatic on the opposite side need to weather the storm, but this time around, not nearly as many good tools. Poppy, uh, Talia, Ivor has three, felt unstoppable. Now that's been denied, now it's been split up. And remember, they banned those champions. We'll see if it works out for Fnatic as we get into game two. Hitting the rift now, Mad Lions, how will they recover? The game one. That was the question coming in. The draft certainly has recovered. Farzi did not just finish a Bloodthirster. Don't believe your eyes. <laughs> just some oopsies there on the technical side. This is going to be a difficult game for Fnatic to navigate again. Kato, you highlighted it already. Merc Treads. Insane buy. My god, the freest buy I have ever seen in my entire life. So much value. Yeah. Just stopping all of what Fnatic wanted. It's really. It's a really awkward draft for man, because like Merc Treads, wow, amazing value. But then two Lethality Poke Champions. Play the Steel Caps are juicy, but you need to go Merc Treads. So the Poke's really going to sting itemization-wise, especially for things like, you know, the Scion. He's going to build MR. The, the Talia can go towards Merc Treads. But yeah, this, this Lethality Poke is going to be dangerous until they get a few items here, Fnatic. So definitely expecting a lot of lanes to get pushed in. A lot of Razork juggling side lanes to make sure that they don't get dove. And a lot of El Yoya, eyes are on him. How much can he make happen in this early game? He's got a lot to play for. Winning 3v3 bot side, top push for early dives, mid push into side. Like, he has a lot of things he can do here. That's, it just feels so awkward for Fnatic to try and play this. I mean, even if Razork ends up finding El Yoya, as you say, you've got so much control over your lanes. He's pretty much going to have someone to match him at every point in time. You've got good push on pretty much every corner of the map. So I think this is the game where Mad Lions are going to take one back. I mean, this is the one where you've got such good control to do it. See already, Mad Lions not going to concede level 2, Halo Blades Varus, an incredibly frustrating champion to lane against, and Nisky, Jace with two skills at level 1. He, he walks away from the soldier, you see that, back steps, gets an auto attack, dodges the soldier with uh, phase rush, and Humula doesn't have a second to put up, so actually, nice trade for him, he has Doran shield too, so just makes that regen a little bit nicer, and uh, yeah, I think you can see it here on the minimap, all these three lanes will start to push in. Yeah. I think a lot of it is for uh, trying to push Humanoid out of lane. So then, as you say, you got control, you got Biscuits there for the Jace. And I feel like for a lot of this, it's going to be maybe even looking to see if they can go for some sort of invade off the push here for Karzi and Hillisang. You can see with the three camps start, it's more than likely going to be a contest for the Blue Bulls. Yeah, could be. But Niski actually struggling a bit. Hasn't popped the potion yet. Can do it now if he wants. But Yoya's going to walk in. Three camps into both side. Knows Razork's side, the top side with that ward onto Raptors. Force him off his blue. Try and split the map. He'll go for it. Wolves here right now, Razork, so he'll be plus one camp, but El Yoya wants the force. He needs to call Hillisang, though. Should win out. No phase rush on the Talia, so he should be able to chase him down with a phase rush of his own. But he has no vision now. He's going to probably walk around and try and smite the way. All spells on cooldown. Long cooldowns at those early levels for the Talia. Should just be able to walk in here. Thousand health left on the blue buff. Smite up for Razork, smite up for El Yoya, but it doesn't look like he wants to contest. Continue to walk forward, though. A bit risky. El Yoya will smite that one away. Bot Pryo for Fnatic paying off, or for Mad, rather, paying off. And not having blue for Razorak is a pain. I mean, you really want to have that to try and clear out your camps as quickly as possible, but not going to have that opportunity now. He will, I was going to say, probably take the, the Robin reset, but Humanoid's in trouble. Walking him down, has the luxury of Phase Rush, go for the stun, immediately fall up with the Arctic Assault if he wants to, but knows that Niski cannot support, does not want to risk any kind of dive. Yeah, I think Humanoid wants the base in TP anyway, so. The, the, the downside here is Razor gets Grump. You know, Yoya could have stayed. Now they're realizing, oh, maybe we can walk back in here and take the 3v3, which they should win. So Trippy needs to be careful. He's not level 3. Oh, connecting onto the Brom. The immediate flick back. Unbreakable. Not quite coming out yet. Hillisang just dies! Wow. 
Rogue Flare from Trippy on the first blood, and he flashes away at the last possible second, just barely holding on there. Mad Lions have to be kicking themselves. Trippy's just playing so forward and so aggressive. This is a 3v3 that is so Sejuani Brown Barra's favorite, but I don't think they got the Brown passive off, so Trippy didn't get chain CC'd. You go for a recall on the zombie ward there, he's gonna clear it out, but yeah, great from Fnatic. You know, this is a, a situation where you need to go even, but now they're ahead. Uh, gonna give it a lot of control as well. Back over to Ryzor, who picked up that kill. First strike goes as well. Making things a little bit easier for him when he gets into 2v2. But again, I don't think you're out of the woods just yet. Oh, come the crab. <laughs> Not gonna be able to steal that one away. Ryzor, he gets Grump, he gets his crab, he gets a first blood. He's getting away with so many things that he should have. He should be down two, 300 gold right now in terms yeah. of camps to El Yoya, but it's actually the flip side. He's even in levels and ahead. You know what? Not gonna get connected there. There's bite, so we will just stay in the lane. Wave pushing out though, he's gonna need support to come back. Trimby will be there in time, but looking how far relatively low mana is gonna make navigating this lane a bit tricky. An opportunity for Mad Lions to reclaim some of the depths that they found themselves in earlier. Yeah, I think Mad can look for an all-in on Trimby if they have vision as to where Razork is. This wave will never really crash. Noah's gonna have to take a bad base. Constant top push for Mad Lions. And uh, yeah, my eyes are just on mid bot as to what they can pull off. I feel like top will be playing in isolation, but as I say that, they could look for a dive. You know, Chasey's not close to six, but he's getting a hell of a lot of damage onto Wunder. Turn to the top side from El Yoya. We saw a ton in spring when they were winning a lot of games. Wonder now going to try to survive here. We'll be able to go zombie mode to lead the wave, but doing his best to hold on. Stun will come through, deny any potential response. Flash for flash trade on the top side, but Wonder loses his life. Yeah, he still gets a lot of this wave, though, and we'll be able to TP back up. So, although the kill does go across, he gets both flashes out. So, he got a good chunk of it, but still, nice kill going across. Would have been nice if it went to Chasey, though. Yeah, the gold is even top, and Wonder, good death. He, he's fine in gold. The Sejuani gets a kill for what? For, for, for more tankiness? You know, Fnatic can crash a bot wave and get a dragon off that in a 3v3 losing bot scenario. That's insane. So you can see El Yoya realizes, well, this top gank worked, but I need to get to this dragon quick. So Fnatic, if they can get this and get out, amazing. They might get caught, though. Playing with Fire Unbreakable, going to fade away in just a second here. The follow up damage now coming through as Noah finally pulls the feathers back, but isn't quite able to connect. Ours needs to be careful, needs to start backing up here. Health bar getting lower and lower. Feathers Humanoid. now laid down, but Humanoid over the wall. Looking for the push, the flash out from Karzi, but the hook from Trimby! This man on fire on land, but now getting knocked back. Coming through, Razor trying to hold on desperately. The stun now going to come in from El Yoya, but he doesn't quite have the range. Fnatic had the mid priority with Humanoid there, so they thought, hey, look, we can group up quickly and make this happen, but Mad Lions played right on the range. But making back. sure that they could actually hold out as Trimby X flashes over the wall, but it was about trying to buy time as Niski could get across, and Madeline just about managed to buy enough space. Yeah, so Fnatic start dragging when El Yoyo shows top, but he smartly instantly bases and runs down. Fnatic think they can finish in the window where El Yoyo's coming out of base, but then they realize they have to stand and fight. You know, tempo is so important. They've invested a turn to get this dragon, and if they just drop it here and Madeline say thanks for the leash, it's over, right? The early game's collapsed, both sides are losing. So they stand their ground, they take a fight, they have one piece of resource, it's Humanoid's mid push. But his play was obvious. When he gets cancelled on the dash, he just flash ults, and that's quite easy to react to. So you can see here, the brown box that blocks a lot of the damage. Fnatic can group up, but in these early stages with Azir and Zaya, they're not that strong. Sejuani Brown, the Jace on a flank, even though he's level 5, but watch this. Alira stops Humanoid, and now this flash ult, it's kind of easy to react to. You know, you're yeah. not really preemptively flashing a flash or anything, but that hook hits from Trimby, which actually saves the play. Overall, that's really the redeeming factor that play was the hook. Hillsang able to walk away despite taking so much unfront damage. That's part of the reason why we've seen Braun utilized so heavily in the LEC season finals. Well, I mean, you're going to be happy with that as mad. Two kills now across the Niski. That's going to give so much towards that chase. And then get control over mid. He can start to play off of that. Look for Rift Tower that's going to be up soon. And as we jump into the game now, pause has been resolved. Reminding you that Mad Lions really start to take over when this poke comes online. You know, one item, two items, these champions are going to feel so oppressive. Fnatic's ability to stay in this game hinges on their ability to sit under a tower and farm, and that option gets worse and worse the more poke is coming through. I also think you're kind of seeing the problem with the four stack for Fnatic on that bottom side. It's like, hey, look, Trimby's hooks, don't get me wrong, we're fantastic. But if they don't land, it is a case of, all right, well, Humanoid has to send himself all the way into that back line to try and follow up on the play. Have someone that can actually get onto Karzi and Niski, and you just don't really have that right now. And I think that's where Mad Lions are going to be able to continuously buy that space for their poke and make it really difficult for Fnatic to try and contest it. And I think even if the hooks do land, there's a very high chance Trimmy just dies instantly. You know, you're going into so much of a brick wall of Mad Lions. And 
Yeah, their pump's going to be strong for the next 20 minutes. They're going to be really, really powerful and only get stronger. 3-4 item lethality, then they'll start to fall off a little bit. But yeah, Fennec need time. <laughs> the worst thing is, it's, it's going to be Duskblade. So it's like, when you go in, they kill Trimmy, they're like, la 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 la, we're out of here! It's yeah, like, we, we got nothing to do! Brief moment to just hate Duskblade. <laughs> I, God, this, as an ARAM enthusiast, I hate that item. Passive is so damn strong. Chasey overstaying a welcome on top side though. Again, chain CC layering coming in from Fnatic. Flawless. Knock up through on the Decimating Smash, trying to body block to make sure that Chasey can't get the angle to flash over the wall! It's a questionable play coming out of the Mad Lions top laner. I think he had a ward and he wants to ward Krux. But he doesn't have any vision to begin with, so he's kind of walking in blind. Enemy jungler's top side, free kill over to Fnatic, a push out top. Wunder is recovered really easily now. Mid gank from uh, El Yoya. Nice angle, nice setup. Niski immediately gonna go in, push back, he's Whoa. ticking! The shield! Barely! The shock blast got eaten by the minions as well. So Niski's up front damage wasn't there, so as he went melee, just didn't quite have enough damage to follow that one up. 20 HP. Can't get it done. A breakable coming out. One target marked. Bar assault coming in as well. Good damage down onto Trimby. Mad Lions have control of bottom lane, but aren't going to yep. be able to get a kill off of it. These lanes are tough. They're really tough for Fnatic. Mad Lions doing good to snowball. Yo, yeah, good mid gank. Almost got the kill. In on theory, that should have been a kill. Razor has the Andres, though. Eight, nine minutes into Razor the game. Razor coming down. Hellasang wants to see a breakable falls away. He's going to be able to do so much damage to this bomb. The feathers now get pulled oh. back. Oh my god! What a combo on the bottom side. Support traded for the entire bot lane as Fnatic again make it work. It's a double for Razor. But this is not the story that was supposed to be told. It was supposed to be Mad Lions having control of the jungle. Mad Lions having control of our bot lane. But off of these early plays, Razor is huge. And now he's only picking up four on that bottom side. He's finding so many small windows. The Gromp, the Crab, these kills, this bot push when El Yoyo's on Herald. Mad Lions disrespecting. Chasey getting punished on that top side. He's just punishing mistakes and finding magic around the map that shouldn't really be there in theory. In theory, Mad Lions should just be running away with this early game with these pushing lanes. With so much mid push as well. Stronger mid jungle, you know, when Niski comes back out and Humanoid having no flash. But yeah, it's just these windows. Couple seconds of a play, he finds it. And ultimately, El Yoya. Much faster early game overall. Trippy gonna try to hook out to safety. Should be the stun. The chain CC follow up here with the concussive blows. Means an easy support kill as he tries to walk it off. Matt Lyons finding the angle to make it work in the mid lane, but here comes Razork again. Flick, where's it gonna go? Everyone should be able to make it out to safety. Not quite gonna connect onto Hillisang. Matt Lyons making plays, but ultimately Razork responding so well to keep Fnatic in the game. And again, looking to make magic happen here on the bottom side of the map. Humanoid would be in no man's land, but Niski's just too low health. Karzi has push on bot side as well, so Hilly knows that's actually safety if he can get down to his AD carry, so manages to escape there. But as you say, Matt is still making plays. They don't want to go quietly here. And at least for, Fnatic, for Mad Lions, getting that kill in the mid lane is going to give something back, but it's still not the best of situations. You need to try and power through your strength, and that's where you are right now. Yeah, I think Wunder is getting to the point where he can just start ignoring Chasey's damage on the next phase. He can just, I think going something like Abyssal Mask is just going to be amazing this draft against Rumble Sejuani with Talia Azir. When he gets that one or two items with this Merc Dreads, Rumble's not ready to scratch him. You can see a lane gang coming in here. See if they can find the setup. You know, if the Scion ults into a Q, Talia pushback, that could be a one shot on the Rumble. But there's a ward in the middle brush, so I think Razor might be on vision. Yeah, Pink's coming out, flash away from Chasey from the Scion ult. You don't see it on screen here, but nice dodge away from the top laner of Mad Lions. We do need to see. Oh, hang on. But back. Catching him out, Chasey overconfident for a brief moment, but the follow-up damage isn't quite there. Way prime in favor of Fnatic for now. El Yoya on the way up. Ulti available for Chasey. No side's gonna walk away, waiting with bated breath to see if those ultimate cooldowns would come out, but Chasey just gonna clear the wave. It's fun to watch the main map sometimes. You can just kind of see exactly what's used by that champion portrait just blinking around. But Humanoid's really pushing in mid here. You know, when jungle's on the map and they're spotted, Humanoid can push up, but this is what happens when jungle's not on the map. Instantly gonna run mid, try and force this Azir back. But uh, the game slowed down. Fnatic are very happy right now. Well, that's the thing. It feels like Fnatic are kind of respect. Well, as I say, the humanoid, maybe not so sure, but um, Fnatic have been respecting when junglers are missing on the map that little bit more, right? But may not be enough. Taking a step forward, the pushback already there, but El Yoya immediately follows up. Niski this time not taking any chances. Will find his third kill of the game. But meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, it's a massive fight. Karzi's instantly deleted. Again, Fnatic responding so well to every single play Mad Lions make, but Mad aren't done yet. Wonder doing what he can. Clear Harold in the mid lane. Should just be the initial crash. 
It's been extra pressure, but Mad Lions fighting fire with fire here. Yeah, so Wonder CP being mid there to defend the Herald, clear the wave, stop the Jace from getting snowballed, and uh, Azir's gonna TP top. This could be bad. If Humanoid TP's top here, he's dead. Three men collapse. They're gonna base in Fog maybe and see if the play opens itself up. Looks like they're gonna reset on the top side. No play to be made. Humanoid's not taking the risk. Razorg looking for the red buff on the cross map. I'm surprised Mad Lions are falling to these bot ganks when they're playing heavily towards mid top. And that's the thing, it's every time Oh, Yoya shows a mid lane. The bot lane hasn't actually crashed their wave in bot, in bot side, and that's where Fnatic are finding so many of these successes. And what I was trying to say was, Humanoid respecting as much as he could that play in mid, but needed to crash the wave. But it feels like when we look for the bot lane, Mad just haven't been respecting when Razrox off the map and getting caught out time and time again. And might once more. Be quick flash or hex flash over the wall there. Wonder just gonna try to wander into mid lane and take control of the wave. This key coming in as well, but I can wonder quite tanky. They get some good chip damage down, but Scion starts to feel like a bit of an immovable object if you don't have more of an extended lane to kind of punish him. Yeah, one minute on the next objectives. Dragon in 110, Herald in almost 130. Cracking open mid tower would really suck for Fnatic. You see that the tower's already half HP, so Mad Lions Herald into mid would be great, but he'd start getting this Dragon Ball rolling with Chemtech already being available. It can be something like an Infernal or a Mountain Soul. But again, Mad Lions bot lane, where are they going? So, you know, they're trying to crash bot wave, they can't crash. If they walk up, they're gonna die. They're gonna walk into River for Vision, but they're against Atelier. El Yoya showing mid, so Razor easily can call this play and just say, let's go. So yeah, need to make sure they're a bit more on the same page here, Mad Lions. This wave's starting to fade away, no one's gonna be able to grab. Looks like most of the creeps here, but Fnatic shifting their bot lane mid. Throwing Wonder into the mix as well, just in case any kind of play breaks out. And while Niski, certainly a fantastic scoreline, 3-0-1. It's starting to feel like so much about the junglers. El Yoyo making plays, Razwork making counter plays across the map. Wherever they go, action is sure to follow. The thing is, though, El Yoyo and Matt are all committed to this Riptile that's spawning in the wild, but Fnatic, they're grouping them in. They want to look for Dragon as Matt will be forced back, but it Matt are in a position where they're trying to contest for this. It means the Fnatic can come later, don't have to worry about fighting dragons, they can play the map. And that's a disaster for Mad Lions because they want Fnatic grouped up where they can just take pop shots at them. Finally able to get the mid wave in, gives them an opportunity to poke, but yeah, as you highlighted, Brazor getting more poke out of the exchange than anyone on the side of Mad. Niski in the side lane, gonna make things a bit tricky here, especially with Fnatic having relatively good control over the top side of the map. I don't think Fnatic care about Dragon. They're just gonna take Herald and mismatch. They value gold, Mad Lions need the Dragon Ball to start rolling because they already dropped the first. So Fnatic are gonna set up Vision top side, take away Blue, threaten to dive onto Niski, get top tier one, and set up Herald. Two objectives. Mad Lion's a bit slow to the punch. Bot wave's not pushed in yet. Top uh, bot tower's very healthy. So I think Fnatic happy with this play. But that's the thing, it's a lose-lose for Mad Lions. It's like, right, we either get Dragon and stop Fnatic from having a 10-minute window where they can operate as they want to the map, or we end up going for Rift Herald, which could end up cracking up a mid, but if they don't, actually hang on. No flash All on the Varus. Coming out, so you will not quite gonna work though, saying surely going to die here, trying to find an angle. Oh, yeah, comes in. Excellent flick back, manages to catch him. Two-man knock Hill saying now gonna try to leap to safety as soon as he's out. Walking away for this one. Interrupt does not quite connect. Sion manages to grab the stun. Noah on the backside, so incredibly low. Karzy, can he get one more arrow? Feathers fly, but they do not find anything. And in comes the equalizer. Chasey finds his man. What is Fnatic doing? There's a free Herald. Varus no flash. Sure, he runs away and you don't go for the kill. Brown flashes away. What are they investing? All of Zaya's summoners and ult, the Sion flash, the Sion, everything's going to a Brown. And they're running into their weak side where Chasey can just move from bottom press his ult. So, a bit of a complicated, confusing play there from Fnatic, because now they might lose to Herald. Because I was about to say, without Herald, it becomes difficult for Mad Lions to like, crack open mid lane, to actually start to get their deeper vision and set up for that poke, because you can always just play off mid lane into both side lane objectives, but now Mad, they're going to get Herald. They may have to crack open mid, and it becomes very easy now to deep push mid, and then play in towards, hey, next Dragon's coming up, great. We'll just litter your bot side rewards, and you have to play but, into us now the whole time. Yeah, it's such an overchase. Fnatic now are trying to salvage it. Humanoid has TP, you can TP behind them with the ultimate and the flash, see if they can look to punish Mad Lion. 6,000 HP on the Herald. Razorks here. This is here. Wait. Fnatic have to be careful about sticking around here too long, though. Where's Jay's TP? poke is going to start to hurt. Varus arrow over the wall, let's see if it hits a vulnerable member. Razor taking a big chunk. Again, a single item Varus doing a lot of work, and they just can't afford to walk into the enemy composition. And Chasey can TP bolt to cover bolt tower if he wants. It's low, but it's either, it's a case of Herald mid and stay around mid and take top tower, or TP bot and cover off. Looks like Chasey's staying around for now, but yeah, when Mad Lions have control, face checking, that's horrible. Varus and Jace, Sejuani ult can come out of nowhere. And it doesn't get easier. 
Those tiers are stacking. You put yourself in a power deficit, a pure tier power trot, season five, season six, whatever. But the, that two item spike when the tier is fully stacked is going to be devastating for the side of Fnatic. I think you need to try and make a quick play here as Fnatic to like get onto where it's Kyrie in the mid lane. But Mad are kind of in a position already to cover it because if you're not able to get this mid lane tower down, it's going to be so unfun. Ultimate not quite going to connect slow on a Razor. Will not be enough. Good reaction speed for Razor to get out to safety. Oh, you're fishing for that play. We'll hold on to his flash, however, so that advantage is going to stick around in the fights to come. XP advantage for Razor. You know, double her penetration item already coming through, but you can see this play. Fnatic over eager. Yeah, you need to call plays off. When Brown flashes here, call it off. They have bot push, they have rumble that can collapse. Jace is missing from top. It's your weak side, you have no vision. What are we doing here, Fnatic? You're just over chasing for a kill onto Brown when you had a Herald. Looking yeah, the bottom the side, JC now in trouble. Pushback comes through. Razor immediately gonna find one kill. Equalizer goes down to very little effect, but no one tripping left isolated. Karzi now coming through. Dustblade not gonna be enough to keep Niski standing. Karzi continuing to try to free fire, but he cannot shred a tank at this stage of the game. Noah now chasing down Hillisang. Both sides firing back and forth, and ultimately Fnatic coming out on top. But that's the timings that Fnatic have to try and find. Hilly will go down here eventually, but the fact that they're able to get that TP, get the pick, play off of that, it feels like that's the only way that they're really going to be able to hold on to this. It will be gifted to Razor as Hilly will fall out for Bleak. But he has actually bought enough time. He would have really liked to try and play for mid tower off of that, but because people reset and start to chase him down, honestly, Great play from Hilly to hold that one off. We just come out of a replay and four members of Mad Lion just died, lost summoners, and Karzi had to flash away. Humanoid finds an amazing pick onto Chasey, but how did Fnatic uh, end up winning the mid fight? We'll have to see it in the replay, but that's a huge win for Fnatic. Almost, I mean, uh, just over a thousand gold lead now. Razor, two thousand gold up on El Yoya. Four zero four. Doesn't even have boots two yet. Two fully completed items. Void staff. Sidwani's health bar becoming less and less of a prop as more magic penetration comes through. Zork Shoe's coming through now. And on top of that, that's one of three carries present on your team. So you can see Niski, does he face check into Trimby? Looks like he does. Trimby auto attack, hooks, ults, and then he's dead instantly, I imagine. That's how they won this. No, he's not. Manages to get, oh, he flashed into the wall. So then Noah can get the kill. Then it's a 2v2 on this area of the map. But because Chasey's dead and Hillisang left mid to try and save him, he just ends up getting chased down. Also, Wonders health bar is based on the value of three people right now because you're going for this lethality style. It's so difficult to try and get through the side. He's gone for Radiant Virtue, not has some tankiness, but not or some armor, I should say. But even then, you can see how difficult it is for the lethality to get through him already. Silly. That was Hank going for the all manages to find two of the immediate bomb, and that's one carry down. Equalizer as fire rains from the sky. Trippy knocks back into it. Fail flashes, and it's a double kill for Chasey. Just like that, Mad Lions have found advantage. They're pushing in the mid lane. What else can they do? Should be able to crack this mid lane open, but I think that's kind of everything that they have. They want to try and fall back over. Or is this Fertile Dragon, but can they? Coming in. What back will not connect, Mad Lions? Retreating back to the Infernal Drake. Should be theirs to take. Uh, trying to get some mid push here. They're scared. Fnatic runs towards the Baron as they try to secure this dragon, but it's Hillisang all over again, isn't it? Is Brahman engaged champion? Well, not really. Is Brahman engaged champion and Hillisang's playing it? Oh, yeah, definitely. W's lands the Q, ults Humanoid, who has no dash away for a soldier. So they get themselves. Actually, they didn't do the dragon yet. Mad Lions, they're kind of resetting, thinking about dragon. Niski, Niski went bot side. He wanted to try and crash that wave, so there wasn't enough damage. And the second Fnatic started to peel off towards Baron, they had to come away. They were like, look, we can't actually do this solo. So Fnatic, back out of the map now. Look back on El Yoya. Good follow up damage. Feather's going to connect El Yoya. Half health before the fight kicks off. We'll be able to grab the honey fruit. I think Mad Lions lost track of Humanoid's TP timer. I think they think it's up. And as Humanoid was dead and they committed to a dragon, they were like, hang on, we need to contest mid wave. The he TPs to Nash, that's gone with Azir's Aya. So they dropped the dragon. So it's a stare down again. Mad Lions get some good kills. But they don't transition it into anything. Fnatic have control around this dragon thing now. TP coming in. Rumble on the way. Chasing now with the Night Harvester completed. Maybe it will be enough, but the dragon is already down. Mad Lions, do they want to keep the play going? Huge shock blast on the Razor on the backside. Equalizer coming out. Razor trying to find a way out to safety. Mad Lions on the chase. Wonder ready to sacrifice himself to DB, but Trimpy ready to turn the fight. Hillisang versus two on the backside, but it's just not enough. Mad Lions too powerful in the pit. Oyoya oh, stepping forward, will find the ultimate onto Wonder. Trippy running, Humanoid laying down the tower. Can they find it? And Niski cut down. Fnatic gets the Drake. Fnatic gets the mid laner. Matt Lyons, it looks good, but in the extended play, Fnatic still find advantage. Fnatic are playing with fire, though. This is where they like the poke. This is where their composition shines. If Trimby gets hit, he could be in trouble. 
Got some blows marking. No follow up here. Karthi has to be careful about 740. He has no mana. Unbreakable the wrong way. Hillisang now leaping out to safety. Feathers fly. The pullback comes in. It's an easy kill for Noah. A head scratcher there. Matt Lyons thought they had the angle, but miss execute. I think Hilly thought that he was going to get rid of more damage than with the feather pullback than he had with the shield going backwards, but it was still so much set up, and the follow up was already there from Noah, so able to cut him down. Bit of a misstep that, honestly, like, look at the top of your screen. This game has been so back and forth, but it's still within touching distance, but both teams even kills gold, and it's only the dragons that really separate. Yeah, Fnatic can best TP top to get tempo on this top side. They know that Hilly's dead, and they have no vision up here because they used all their wards on the bottom side of the map, so the face check becomes difficult for Mads, and it contest the blue buff. Wonder as Humanoid pushes out top, Karzi sniping out Razork in that last fight with his Q was essential. And Fnatic transfer this top tempo into maybe a top tower. Mad Lions don't have the Sergio on you, they're just gonna lose this, it looks like. Instantly take it down, and now Razor kicking the fight off, trying to isolate El Yoya. El Yoya on the retreat, fantastic equalizer. Stopwatch forced out early for Razor. Shut down now onto El Yoya. Mad Lions have to keep the play going if they want to the come arrow. on top. The arrow will not find them. Razor managing to stay safer now, but that's the ulti hitting Trimby. Who else can it connect on? Another one locked up. It's just Wonder. Hillisang now frontlining once again, but there's just no one in position to follow up. Fnatic walking away with their lives, a one-for-one -one trade. No, not even, just El Yoya dropped. Fnatic are just again working off these tiny, tiny timing windows that you have from Karzi trying to move from mid as he was trying to push that off the mid lane tower to get into position. And now Mad Lines, they want to try and Watch contest. You know, the the shuffle, the Trimby over the wall. Buying time, 2k, it's getting lower and lower. Can they steal the objective away? No, they cannot. Trimby stepping oh, in, Humanoid scoops back into the waiting arms of his team, and down goes Karzi. Niski was so powerful, but there's certainly no way out of this one. And he turned the 1v1, Humanoid backstepping. Niski determined to get one phase rush. Dustblade just walks it off. Big burst out of the Jace, but it's Fnatic who win the day. This top siege, their, their usage of tempo was exceptional in getting that top tower. And Razork, the stopwatch, he flashed away from the Jace shock, uh, shock blast as well in the same frame of coming out of it. So really well played by him. Fnatic have a lot of DPS and they have a lot of front to back. Mad Lions have a lot of CC and a lot of poke. So it's a case of in the long run, in terms of the fights, if Fnatic can keep finding hooks and fighting you, they'll always find kills. But my MVP for this area of the fight was Razor, the stopwatch on the Rumble ult, and just flashing the J shock blast. Yeah, and the fact again here, you look, Razor goes golden, but look at where Karzi is. You're fighting four versus five at this stage, and you get a single arrow coming out from Karzi. So Fnatic were like, great, we can see that this virus is on mid lane. You can't come quickly to this fight because you get caught off. So they find the re-engage off of here, and it sets them up beautifully then for the bar. It's been way too messy. Mad Lions, as much as they want to scrap and fight and have these skirmishes, to see the Humanoids shuffle again as we go back to live. Noah, blinking how far, context missing, but presumably the poke, the pressure from the side of Mad Lions. Blue Trinket coming out. Recall just barely completing. Courtesy of the Baron buff there. I gotta say for Mad Lions, things get a little bit easier. Not at this kind of gold deficit, but with the introduction of armor penetration to both Niski and Karzi. Last Whisper starting to come through. Sorelda's presumably on the way. Oh, wow, Still so, so tough, greedy. though. So greedy, that recall. Could have got cancelled and chased down, and that would have really hurt their Baron. But still, he gets the recall off. They're looking for this mid tower. Wonder can just sit there and tank all this damage. I mean, the problem is, the only person on your team who shreds through Wonder's health bar right now is a melee champion. It's Rumble. And you cannot walk into this Scion to start to hit him. So Wonder getting so much value out of a pick that I think should have been a lot trickier in the lane phase. You just look at the uh, mid jungle items for Fnatic right now. They are so, so strong. One Nautilus hook into a Talia combo, that's a one shot. No flash on Varus, no flash on Jace. You have to play on a different screen here with your poke and pray that it lands. But yeah, in terms of space control, Fnatic kind of owned this mid lane. Hook's gonna miss. Yoya maybe finding an angle. Yoya sees it on a humanoid. Where's the follow up going to go? Chain CC is there, but again, no follow up damage from the side of Mad Lions. They're continuing to land poke, but it's so hard for them to entirely commit to the fight. Yeah, getting like stronger it. though. Oh yeah. Is this the time? That's more like it. Slowly but surely burning them down, but it's Razor oh, on the back side. And Razor gonna do it! Fanatic! They just pull the trigger better. They just out execute. And Mad Lions getting so close, corralling them so consistently across the game, but the fights are just not swinging in their favor. This was supposed to be El Yoya saying, look, I got control of this game, but it has been the opposite Spanish jungler in Razork that has been absolutely phenomenal. El Yoya, steal away a bit of redemption here in the pit. I take it back. <laughs> has retention in that one. Yeah, it could have been sole point there for Fnatic. Big steal from El Yoya, but what a play from Razork. You know, 
He heard him say, you heard him saying El Yoya, another Spanish Shangra, has got a title. Flakid, Spanish shady carry that came in, has got a title. But he still hasn't, and he's been here for a while, and he's been fighting. But man, that was a play, that was a game-winning play almost if they got that dragon. The ult knocked them into his WE combo. They didn't have flash, yes, but the setup was just a slam dunk. Need more plays like that. Options to shut down the poke that Mad Lions can bring to bear. Right now, Fnatic a significant gold advantage. Mad Lions make a good setup. This poke could be unbearable, but it's so tricky to navigate this game with Fnatic having so much vision control. And the flexibility he's bringing here, Razork. He can play Ivor. He can take a, a step back and let you carry. He can play Talia and go 5k up individually. He can Wonder. play Karthus. Wonder might be in trouble. Yeah, Wonder not quite as tanky as he used to be. Shut down coming through. Still a strong frontliner, but cannot just walk into four and face check. Cut down. And it's a good point, Cajal, that you bring up. Uh, Razor, when we think about him, we got the Poppy game. It was his best game in summer versus Excel. We thought maybe that was the way he needed to play, but he's shown us utility, he's shown us scaling, and now he's shown us incredible playmaking on this pick like Talia. Yeah, I mean, the fact he gets to walk off to the side here, gets into position for it. And yeah, I mean, great shock blasts that are coming through, but the second they take that step too far forward, he's already going in. He knows that he's got the opportunity to cut them out, gets Elioia out of the equation, and the immediate oh. flick onto two of them shuts them down. Beautiful stuff from Razork. And it's just unfortunate here that it is just Elioia then saying, no, look, we got to try and keep ourselves, get ourselves something here. Yeah, the full package would have been the dragon as well, because Yoya would die as well. That would be another kill, so it'll be three kills and a dragon, but that was a good death there by the Jungler of Mad Lions. You can see Razork, that was probably after the Talia ult, just screaming Bomba or something it looked like when he was just one-shotting both of them. Uh, 50 seconds on the Nash. A lot of setup here from Fnatic on the top side. I was gonna connect, but he has like... back, massive damage chase, he's wow. dead! Razork's too damn powerful, he's three items, it's 29 Trippy. minutes into the game, Trippy! Just barely able to live, Nisky looking for an angle. Shock Blast comes out, looks like Trippy should be able to retreat safely. Mad Lions are almost able to trade one for one, but lose their top laner. Big pick for Fnatic though, because they just lost the tempo advantage. Wind Wonder getting picked off. Now they get to return the answer. Did he? Spots Razor. Razor. Oh. Miji flash. Doesn't know. Oh, actually, hang on. Back. Killasang knockup now comes in. Aftershock gonna make sure the trippy stays relatively healthy. TP coming in as well. Wonder in the area. Killasang slowly but surely getting burnt down. As Humanoid's gonna slide and glide his way in and take out the Mad Lion support. Now it's Karzi. The flash out to safety just barely in time to keep him standing. That would have been 100 to 0 from Razor. He's so strong right now. Level 16. Hit a saying 30 seconds. Chasey's down. And they're gonna move towards this top side. See if they can start a Baron here. No vision for Mad Lines. It's all slowly expiring. An easy, easy Baron. Triple damage threats. Two options for frontliners to tank. Mad Lions, though, not gonna let it go quietly. The poke getting stronger and stronger again. Double Sorel this year. Starting to hurt. Wonder's still incredibly tanky. Mad Lions, are they willing to burn any resources to cut through the Scion health bar? For now, the answer is no. And this has got to be a frustrating game for Mad Lions. Again, in draft, they were so favored. There were so many risks in the way that Fnatic chose to draft this. The double AP in jungle and mid lane, but they managed to play through so much of their comps deficiencies that just outplay in these exchanges. And now it's on Mad Lions to bring themselves back into this game. Just wondering when the Baron starts going to come through from Fnatic. They shred it. They have a great comp for getting this Nash down quickly, and Mad Lions needs to be very quick and responsive. Because you can see they're going for this tower, but that's five seconds gone. This Baron will die in about eight, so I think they might just miss their way of contesting this. Gone. She can shred it down. They get nothing. They walk into contesting a little bit of mid lane priority, but it's in exchange for a Baron. Testament to the advantage that Fnatic have been able to build for themselves. The Pope now coming out, but Fnatic not able to let that one keeping through, and Karzi is just deleted. Razork cannot miss. Mad Lions are out of time. Chasey, desperate to turn this one back. The Equalizer manages to get a little bit of something done, but they cannot cut through Wonder, and yet another carry on the side of Mad Lions will fall. Fnatic keeping Chasey in the area, taking their time, staggering the respawn timers. El Yoyo will fall as well. Fnatic slaughtering the Mad Lions. The draft looks so difficult, but Fnatic make it look easy in game two. They march their way to match point. Razork, take a bow. What a performance to have on the stage here in Montpellier. He sees that Karzi has no flash from the last time Razork blew it. And like a heat seeking missile, he's taken out the AD carry of Mad Lions. Doesn't look like it again then just yet, but these ultimates from Razork, I mean, exceptional again. Just kills Karzi straight away, sees they split up, and 
This isn't the first time we've seen it. We saw it in mid with that play to knock on to two. We saw it in the early game to punish the Mad Lions bot lane. Every single ultimate has had value, it feels like, from Razork. Watch Wonder as well. Double knock up into another double knock up here. He was just constantly just buying time for his team. And that's the thing, Wonder may not know the matchups as well as he used to, but when it comes to team fights, it's like riding a bike. This guy knows exactly where he needs to be at all points in time, and it's just setting up so well for the rest of his team. Mad Lions, I mean, in the early game, El Yoyo finally really showing so much face in the early lanes, making these proactive plays, leveraging that early bot priority, but Fnatic just matched every single play, punished any time anyone on the side of Mad decided to overextend. Yeah, I'm surprised Mad Lions played that much through top. You know, that one dive, it was great, but you lost a lot in terms of control on the bot side, and Fnatic have punished so many times when you go towards Herald, so I feel like there needs to be a bit of a communication through the jungle bot lane after this game off Mad Lions, but it's Fnatic show right now, just seeding on this bot tier three. Wonder. Now gonna try to pitch for the all and good combo thus far, but no, just immediately alts back up. Feathers come back, Fnatic can simply walk away. Tower still falls in the meantime, and now Trimby looking to re-engage. Nisky off to the side, looking for a flank angle in. Hillison getting lower and lower. Decent amount of poke coming out. Wonder now doing his best in front line. Stun will come through, concussive blows. But Fnatic pushing in, pushing forward. It's so hard for Mad Lions to stop these minions, these lethality champions, struggling to clear the waves. Need those cooldowns to poke. TP now coming through. Fnatic determined to end this game. Yeah, Humanoid can TP in three seconds as well. Gonna go on the top side. Midway is pushed in, two inhibs down. Wave stacked up in top. That could be a top inhibitor falling here for Mad Lions. That's three inhibitors. They have to fight this. They have to chunk them out here. Mad Lions need more damage. Poke coming in. The Razor again splitting it. The Braum wall gonna block the Talia wall. Now maybe the follow up. Trimby cut down. Razor forced to flash out to safety. Mad Lions buying themselves a bit of a respite. A bit more time to hold on in this game. Fnatic try to go for too much, and they do get something in return. Karzy, though, was forced to flash in that last one. So this could be massive at these next fights. Can we just take a second? Razor is five levels up on El Yoya. He's 7,000 gold ahead. The individual difference right now in the jungle is insane. Yoya will eventually get to level 14, but this Talia is off the rails, almost on the sick lights of Shadow Flame. And you can see Razor needs to be careful though. Goes too deep, gets CC'd by anything, he's dead. So instant flash away, Trimby falls. And in game one, Noah was the beneficiary of so much of the tension, had a stellar game, but it was Humanoid who was styling. And in game two, Noah's doing well. Humanoid's doing well, but it is Razork who is styling on the opposition. 1v9 isn't the right word. The other members of Fnatic are doing too much, but it's pretty damn close. This Talia is oppressive. But that's the thing, when you think back to Summer, the criticism we had of Fnatic was, look, they're just not keeping up with the meta. We're still getting Humanoid playing any mid after the nerfs, and they're the only team that's really doing it. But it feels like as we've moved into Season Finals, we're getting to see the many changing faces of this squad. Razor can step up with Karthus, with Talia to be the carry. Noah can step up in the bot lane. Humanoid's been popping off and things like the Jace and the Tristana. It feels like every threat that Fnatic have has taken a massive step forward, and you just can't count any one of them out anymore. Yeah, I'm watching Razor. It's not a fair enough wave. They can clear it. Where's their Talia ult? Hilly can block it if he gets there in range. No, he doesn't, so the pushback oh, comes through. In. Tower's gonna fall, maybe. Only the cannon creep up and available. Bar Assault will connect on a Noah, forcing out the Clans Wonder Determined. Take down the tower, knock him on the oh, is big. The flick back coming through, that's the support gone. Chasey lays down the flamethrower, goes golden and barely flashes out to safety. Another inhibitor will drop off to the side, but instantly the stopwatch now coming in. Karzy goes golden, tries to buy a brief moment, but he has no flash. Fnatic, count those timers and make sure that there is no way for the AD to escape. Niski has to try to find the backline, but he cannot fire through the Scion. He does not oh, have no. the bullet penetration that he needs. Humanoid on a rampage, Fnatic. Making sure to close it out clean, not getting a single moment to the opposition as another kill will be scooped up as Razork is massive. A giant in the jungle to tear through the Mad Lions and take Fnatic to match point. What are we witnessing? Fnatic are steamrolling Mad Lions. An incredible performance across the board from jungle, from the mid lane, from the bot side, wonder in team fights. Like, this is a new breed of Fnatic, and they look fantastic. They look calm as well. They don't look like they're getting too ahead of themselves. They know the job's not done. One more game away from getting into the finals against G2 tomorrow, but Mad Lions, these early game comps, it's either blunders on cross maps when you're trying to make a, uh, a play on one side, it's either just not coordinated enough, I feel like, to leverage big enough leads to set up objectives properly.
And while we felt like the draft looked better for Mad Lions in game two, at the end of the day, Fnatic managed out execute and still came out on top, taking themselves to match point. So let's send it over to the analyst desk to break that one down. Thank you so much as uh, we see Fnatic in the huddle, in the room, trying to make sure they bring this one home. Of course, for Mad Lions, so much to think about. Now the compound of that game one, but that game two. Um, I want to reiterate what I heard there at the end of the cast. This is this is really kind of a, a different Fnatic we're seeing, and I know we saw them picking up speed and, and going to an extra gear already in summer, Vettius, but I feel like this is something else. I think what we saw last week was Fnatic figuring out how to integrate Wonder into you know, a, a system that they had built for themselves with the addition of Oscar Rinnan. It felt like that with Oscar Rinnan getting more confident and finding picks that he was very comfortable with, he kind of could fill the role of carry. And we saw him, the pentakill Gwen, right? The man can definitely carry. Um, but with Wonder joining the roster now having a full week, it feels like that the rest of the carries needed to step up Razork is playing phenomenal. We didn't talk about him much in game one because it was Ivan, but game two, you saw his impact. Humanoid is having an incredible series. Just everyone is playing on top form, and it feels like this whole roster is completely locked in. I think the crucial thing I just about how Fnatic is playing is whenever they are doing any action on the map, it feels like everybody is in tune with it. If they are making an aggressive play on the other side of the map, Humanoid steps back, Wunder also steps back. Always, when there are map trades, it feels like Fnatic is in unison. And in that, they're allowed to express themselves in such a way on a mechanical level that is simply just unbelievable. They're making the Mad Lions' head spin. And honestly, this game was just an absolute slugfest between these two teams just going nuts. Uh, this is after, uh, I think, uh, Wonder had actually fallen down dope, to yeah. early yeah. on. But, you know, uh, this is when Mad, oh. uh, Mad Lions Sorry, Fnatic found a way to really bounce back inside the game. Humanoid survives in the mid lane after they get a kill up on top side. Then immediately, it's on bot side. This is in the span of 60 seconds. They win on top and bot lane, and they survive the pressure of the enemy jungler in this moment. But the important thing to sell here is not that this was Fnatic dominating the entire game, because this came after the early game, where before that, there had been a great moment where Mad Lions had found two huge haymakers of their own in top lane and in bot lane. This was a back and forth game where he had, I think, 40 kills. By the end of it, it was just absolutely unreal. And it was El Yoya finding a way to path around the vision that secured them this gank. I think that the crucial thing, right, is that if you play this composition, this is what you expect. You have the Sijuani early game, the Varus, and of course the Rumble into the Sion. This is a terrible matchup to be in with Sion. Uh, and of course, it's a very good start. This is how it's supposed to be with the draft, but you're not allowed to make any, any mistakes. And even this fight, it was so, so narrow and so, so close because a little bit of extra damage onto someone, maybe this could have gone worse too. Mad Lions are playing in a way that relies a little bit too much on luck. Yeah, exactly. And I think we, we're forgetting that Mad had a good start to this game. Um, and I, I think maybe we're forgetting that they also made draft adaptations, right? It's just that when it comes to the most important moments in this game where you really have to play on the knife's edge, it was Fnatic that was sharper. Yeah, it was it was the, the later game moments, I think, yeah. especially, right? Because there were a couple of times, like, a fight would happen in mid, Mad would win, and a fight would happen in bot that Fnatic would win. And, and it was a very chaotic game, right? And in those sort of, like, chaos games, it becomes very hard to sort of realize what the entire map state is, right? If you're Karzi on the bot side of the map and your jungler just gets a kill in mid lane, Theoretically, you should be worried, yeah. hey, maybe I don't have pressure here, but you think you're up on the map, but you falter in that moment because you can't see everything around you. And Fnatic were so cohesive to tie back in what you said. And then just looking at the draft, I love the Fnatic. They were steps ahead. They adapted Streets their ahead. one, two, three. They adapted <laughs> their one, two, three before Mad Lions were allowed to do so. They switched up by banning Ivan and also removing Rel, which 100% would have been Mad Lions' adaptation in the first pick. And then looking at once again the Talia, it seems like Blue Side Mad Lions doesn't have an answer to it because Talia Flex is simply too powerful. And once again, Noah in the 4 5 getting Zaya. For me, that's a goddamn war crime. It's just goofy, is, is how it looks. But I think, like, you're onto something there, right? With Fnatic changing their, their pattern initially. Because, you know, you're Mad Lions, you go into the second draft, you expect, hey, what worked for Fnatic, they're going to roll with that and they're going to keep it going through. Then all of a sudden, Fnatic are self banning the Ivern, the Rel's out of the picture too. Maybe you're expecting both to be up and to switch to the Ivern priority, like we were talking about. It's throwing that wrench in so early on where all of the draft prep that Mad Lions did between games kind of goes out the window because Fnatic do something unexpected immediately. 
one of the things that we talk about with both of these teams is often the meta, right? Fnatic is, well, Mad Lions specifically has often been a product that like, if they don't have the right meta, can they perform? And then time and time again, they've proved to us, no, we can, you just need to give us a little bit more time to adapt. Whereas Fnatic seem to have found themselves in the perfect meta. Yamato, you said this at the very beginning of the day where Humanoid has the mid laners that he loves to play. Razork is getting so much comfort. And you look at this draft from Fnatic and it was the same in game one. You sit there and think, there are no champions here that they didn't want. And it's incredible to see them come into this series so well prepared because I don't know what Mad Lion's answers are because they're very quickly running out of them. Yeah, and uh, very quickly because the next game could be their last here in Montpellier and in their LEC year, right, Ender? And we saw a nice adaptation to a once-loved feature of, uh, of the memescape. Of, of the humanoid line, right? Yes. We had humanoid 1.0, which was humanoid dies. If anyone was unfamiliar, we did a lot of <laughs> DND campaigns. I'm sure your Baldur's Gate fans out there are going to be familiar with that. But now it's humanoid survives, right? Like uh, back to game one, there were so many moments here, dodging away from the charm. And then in the team fights too, Chasey was always trying to dive onto him and he just could not be ganked whatsoever. Here again, everything hits him, but he survives with just a sliver of last second ultimate to skate on out. And uh, it just really is impressive. What you don't see there is what he was doing in the team fights because that was unreal back in game number one. He was getting dove every game and finding ways to disengage and again, live on just a sliver. The reason why this is so important is again, at the beginning of the day, Yamada, you set so many of these stories up for us, but you talked about how when you coached him, it was all about giving him this bubble to play safely. And the fact that he's just doing this by himself, all this pressure is being thrown towards him and he's being able to weather it. It really does feel like that this man is focused and he's in the zone. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, they're all in the zone, and I think from both sides there are so many skirmishes. This is an extremely bloody series so far. 82 kills across the two games, 39 in game one, 43 in game two, and I think I think we're starting to see that, that Fnatic is just a little bit sharper when it comes to it. I also want to call out last week how incredibly cute and warm it was that we saw after Fnatic winning Razorak and Wonder, boom, the biggest hug I've ever seen. It was so sweet. And now you're seeing that translate. I think you're seeing that synergy come back to what they aspire to have back in winter in some of those engages. No, 100%. I feel like Fnatic, they just play with such discipline. As the game progresses, the best answer to desperation is discipline. Because in both of these situations, two games, Mad Lions have tried to kind of claw their way back into the game. For Fnatic, they connect together, they're always aware of the next play, and then Humanoid in this moment, look at this demon shuffle, throws it while he's in the air, oh. absolutely gorgeous. Oh my goodness, Fast and Furious hiring right now, who's Vin Diesel? <laughs> on the map. <laughs> we got a new one, Umanoid in the mid lane. Not Fantastic. to mention to Leah, the rocket. Uh, <laughs> hey. I like it. I like it. Uh, I also love how we pull away right before he dies. You yeah. know, he doesn't uh, die. He doesn't die. It's the new one. I promise. Yeah. I promise. I promise. Hey, we've only got a minute anymore, and then this is where we have to go to Mad. You know, we have to. We have to give them the credit that they have been able to turn situations like this around in the past. Maybe they weren't quite exactly the same, but they are staying the same. They are staying on the blue side. Um, I, I wouldn't know where to start. Do you guys know? Two areas I see them getting outmatched right now, apart from draft and all that, is one, I think in the early to mid game, they're playing their side lanes worse. In game one, it was Chasey getting dove. In game number two, it was sort of like the three, four player stacks where Yoe doesn't reset to go cover that bot side when it goes on through. Uh, and then when it comes to their actual fights and the skirmishes they look for, Fnatic keep finding ways to sort of shock them out of brush with the positioning of Trimby usually. They have to be able to get, put eyes on him or they're going to keep falling. I have to just say, plain and simple, this pry on AD carry is so I agree. off. Just yep, Zaya on four, and then Karzi is playing these champions that were relevant a year ago. Come on, we need, like, Karzi's been form, performing good. The way he plays on Varos, he was doing things I didn't even know was possible. He kept them in the game. We need to see more prior on Karzi, make sure that Hilly and Ilioya connect. Preach. And have some kind of Preach. game Shabano. player on board. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, you got to love Yamato. He tells us how it is. And yes, if Mad Lions want to stay relevant in the series, they're going to have to turn it around because Fnatic are only one game away of getting a grand final finals against their arch rivals G2 Esports. We'll be back with more after the break. Azor coming down. Hellasang wants to see a breakable falls away. He's going to be able to do so much damage to this bomb. The feathers now get pulled back. Oh my god! What a combo on the bottom side. Support traded for the entire bot lane now. The humanoid over the wall. Looking for the push. The flash out from Karzi with the hook from Trippy. This man on fire on land, but now getting knocked back. Oh, 
you want back one? I mean, I took the ice. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. If you kill him, we can do nothing, brother. If you recall, it's a miss, it's a miss, it's a miss, no? Don't go yet, okay? Don't go yet. Now we can, now we can. Can go now? Can go now? Can go now? Red Bull gives you wings. Each game is inspired by movement. The drive is to be one move ahead of everyone else. To be legendary. Are you ready to make your move? Make it legendary. Join Kia at the League of Legends EMEA Championship. Kia. Movement that inspires.